I was recently asked to create a piece of a couple for their first anniversary. So, here's a custom illustration of a bride and a groom with their dogs. I pretty routinely do bridal fashion illustrations, and I've definitely done my fair share of pet portraits, but as a proud fur mom, this was a pretty exciting project for me. I use a variety of different materials when I do a fashion illustration, depending on what the client wants, but typically I just use watercolor paper and colored pencils, and then I usually ink in Sharpie. When you're commissioning a piece of an actual person, or in this case, animal, it's always best to supply really high quality reference photos. It's also always good to give a variety of pictures, even if you're trying to go for a specific pose, having some extra shots that show, say, markings or close-up details of important items of clothing or accessories can really help the artist really get all the details just right. For instance, I do a lot of bridal illustrations, and some of those little details can be very important to the recipient. For instance, that might just seem like a simple little bracelet to me, no big deal, but maybe it was her grandmother's bracelet who's no longer with her, and so therefore that really can mean a lot to the family. So getting that into the picture and getting it correct can be very important. I also always work with the client to make sure that I include all the details that they want. For instance, do they want the veil or the bouquet included in the image? For some people, those are really important choices and decisions that they made, and some people maybe a little less so, so I always like to make sure that I'm including everything that they want to make this image just right. In a case like this, the dogs weren't able to come to the actual venue, so an illustration like this is a great way to sort of include them in commemorating the event. Of course, the first step is sketching in the basic composition. I'm starting with the human figures first because obviously they are larger, so they're going to be a bigger portion of the composition, and then I'm going to work the dogs in after that. I have to check with my reference photos to make sure that I'm getting all the basic shapes correct, but at this point I'm not too terribly worried about likeness or details. This is also a fashion style illustration, so I'm not going for a perfect likeness or complete realism. It's definitely sort of romanticized, which is why I like it so much for bridal illustrations. The dogs were definitely a kind of fun and interesting challenge. Even though I've drawn plenty of dogs, I've never integrated them into a fashion and illustration before. And in fashion sketches, the proportions aren't as regular and anatomically correct necessarily as they are in real life. So having a dog integrated into those exaggerated features and proportions was definitely something kind of fun and interesting. And of course, just like with the human figures, I wanted the dogs to be recognizable to their owners, not just nondescript, vaguely dog-like shapes, but actual pictures of their dogs. With the basic sketch finished, it was time to move on to the actual coloring process, which put me back in more familiar territory. I usually work top to bottom and left to right, so this had me basically starting with the skin tone of the bride. I wanted to get a basic light source and contrast level sort of started, but give myself a little wiggle room for later in case I needed to go and tweak things. Once I started shading the groom's skin tones, I realized I did want to go back and add a little bit more contrast to the bride. Now that I had the basic contrast and lighting figured out, it's easier to move on to the actual garments and get those shaded in. Thank you. 
Usually the hardest part of illustrating a bride and groom is getting the large expanses of fairly neutrally colored objects to be interesting and still read as white or gray or black but not be super dull and boring in the shading. So of course I like to work in some pinks and blues and purples in a white dress for instance, and in this case the groom's jacket and suit were actually kind of a bluish gray. So that helped out a lot, gave me some interest and some color. A lot of grooms nowadays really take what they wear very seriously also, so I try to pay close attention on the groom to things like the shoes, the belt, the watch, because again, you never know if those are really important pieces to them or not. Another interesting challenge with the dogs was trying to keep them both recognizable and rendered with some nice shape and form, but not get so overly detailed that they stole the entire focus of the picture. I wanted this to be a very cohesive family sort of picture with everybody having sort of equal play. The bride and I also had some conversations about what the dog should be wearing. We decided that the little boy dog should have a bow tie the same color as the groom's tie, but then we decided to give the girl dog a nice little bit of bling and I tied that into the colors of the bride's bouquet. Now that everything's colored and shaded, I can move on to inking, which is always a lot of fun. I like to bring out all the nice little details and really pull focus to the things that really make this couple and this event unique. And with a quick little signature in the bottom corner, this illustration is finished. And there we have a wonderful family portrait with some real character. Happy anniversary, you two. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe down below. Have a beautiful day, and I'll see you next time.